I invite you to join Zera and myself for a journey to Sesame. Sesame is a very special light source accelerated, accelerator based in the Middle East. It is the energies of Cypriots, Egyptian, Israeli, Iranian, Pakistani, Palestinian, and Turkish scientists which propel this project. These are not your usual bedfellows. <laughs> you may think I'm spinning a story straight out of 1001 Nights, or it may seem to you that this collaboration can only happen in a parallel universe. But the project is real, its scientific quality is high, and it's happening right now. I am a theoretical high energy physicist. My natural habitat is CERN. What am I doing in a light source in Jordan? There, together with other scientists from the countries I've mentioned, we are trying to build, with the use of science, understanding in the area. The project is very special. Each of us brings his own history, his own wounds, carries his own scars. Each of us has his own interests. And yet, we have one common vision, which is to benefit the people of the region and the whole of humanity. And we do that by the knowledge we acquire and by the example we set. It is heartwarming to see the support of this vision from many scientists all over. We are fortunate to have with us here Hervik Schopper, who generously contributed his experience and time as Director General of CERN, a former one, as to become a president of the CERN Council. This is really an outstanding example. I am proud to be one of the founders of Sesame. I'm an Israeli representative to the CERN Council, to the Sesame Council. Also, it's true about Sesame. But. <laughs> I'm Zehra Seres, a biophysicist from Turkey, and I'm the co-chair of Science Advisory Committee of Sesame. I want to tell you about our driving force at Sesame, science. As our colleagues well know, a light source, which Sesame is, is producing synchrotron radiation when charged particles go around circular orbits. When charged particles go around circular orbits, they emit radiation, and this radiation can be used for experiments. In Sesame, the circular orbit is a 2.5 giga electron volt storage ring, which can accommodate more than 20 experimental stations around it. These experimental stations provide tools in the spectral range from infrared all the way down to hard X-rays. With these tools, we can answer questions in fields ranging from physics to medicine, from archaeology to arts, from environmental science to energy, from uh, material science to chemistry. So, although the sesame ring is not yet ready, we plan to start our experiments a month from now in June 2013. There is an infrared microscope already installed on site, and the infrared beamline scientist, Ibrahim Youssef, who is from uh, Jordan, will start projects on the microscope parallel to constructing his beamline. And there are several projects that are lined up. Some of these projects are actually address regional uh, issues. Some others concentrate on universal problems. Those on the regional issues are, for example, a project on uh, pharmaceutical products that are produced from the uh, local herbs. Another project looks at the sediments in uh, Yarmouk and Jordanian rivers to study the heavy metals there. In all these projects, scientists from Egypt, from Israel, from Jordan, from Iran are collaborating. As I said, there are also universal projects, and in those projects, we are also collaborating with people from the United Kingdom, from France, from Spain. 
So we are ready to go. Now, if you look at the map, you see that there are several synchrotron radiation sources around the world. There are more than 60 synchrotron radiation sources around the world, but none in the Middle East. If you peek into the experimental hall of one of these facilities, you see that people, scientists, many scientists work next to each other round the clock. And usually, at some point, and it's usually in the middle of the night, they get curious about each other's work. They, are, they start asking questions to each other. They want to know about each other's discipline. They want to know about each other's projects. They start chatting. They get to know each other. And then they help each other when they need it, because sometimes you need help. And then by using the language of science, they learn to trust each other. And fine lines of connections are established. It's a bit like CERN. Indeed, Zara. It is in a corridor not far away from here. We're in discussions with the great CERN scientist, Sergio Fobini. We sought how to try and build a bridge of science for improving understanding in the Middle East. I feel very strongly that we, as scientists, which are privileged to have a glimpse, are allowed to have a glimpse in the cook, in the kitchen of nature, I also have to contribute back to society. And one of the ways to contribute back to society is to take our skills of collaboration and for the benefit of the larger society. Like here at CERN, after all, the Large Hadron Collider was built by the efforts of, and the experiments around it were built by efforts of scientists from all countries. It's a jigsaw puzzle of millions of pieces, each one of them printed in a different place, which filled, fit so perfectly well together. Now, CERN was also part of the process of the healing of Europe after the war. It is this spirit of collaboration in international, high-quality scientific projects that we want to bring to our region. There is a difference. In Europe, the war was over. Not so in my region. In order to establish a common ground, in 1995, we gathered together scientists from the immediate region. They were Palestinians, Israelis, Moroccans, Egyptians, Jordanians. We all gathered under a large Bedouin tent together with Nobel laureates. The lectures were fantastic. We all survived a magnitude 7 earthquake, which was maybe a good sign that we are protected. <laughs> and we all stood in one moment of silence for the memory of the murdered Yitzhak Rabin. And the silence of that moment will forever echo in my ears. Now, we had time and again had to hit the fact that our region became violent again. We had to adjust to that. We had to make many compromises over a very torturous road. But there were two principles to which we upheld. One is that every party should be able to contribute to and benefit for from the project. That's number one. And number two, that we have to do high quality science. Our collaboration has to be based on high-quality science. It is better to do nothing at all than to base such a collaboration on second-rate science. And this is a principle which we are trying to adhere to all the time. Now, things became, again, a, a complicated. And maybe to illustrate uh, to you part of the complication, I will tell you just a short uh, story. After we, in, actually at CERN, decided that the, ho the host institute will be in Jordan, uh, we had to ask a scientist from Novosibirsk, uh, funded by Japanese UNESCO money, to go to Berlin to take an old uh, machine, to disassemble it, mark the boxes, and then bring it uh, into the desert in Jordan, while at the same time one is building, one's constructing a building to host the place. 
Well, we've come a long way from those meticulously labeled boxes carrying the components of the German synchrotron. Initially, as a physicist, I didn't think too deeply about dialogue, the science, scientific dialogue, peace, and first-class science happening at CERN. Even if I did, it wouldn't have occurred to me that the same concept would be applicable in the Middle East. In the early days, when colleagues wanted to involve me in Sesame, I avoided them. I did not want to work on a second-hand synchrotron. Moreover, I did not believe that there were enough people in the region to use it. Only after I listened to them, I gave in and listened to them, did I realize that there would be a brand new storage wing, that there was a carefully planned and thought over training program already underway, and it also became clear to me that Sesame would be an excellent opportunity for scientists coming back to the region. Then I became a convert. So I believe that a light source like Sesame can be a beacon of hope and scientific, high scientific achievement for the region. But we must not forget the tough questions that we face. If science is not high on the agenda of most of the members of Sesame at the moment, can Sesame make a difference to catapult science to the forefront? Can scientific language be used to start a dialogue among people burdened with history and who come from diverse and sometimes conflicting backgrounds? Or are we ignoring the realities in the region in pursuit of a dream? Zara, who would imagine that last March in a room in Amman, Israel, Iran, Turkey and Jordan each committed five million dollars for the project. Is that our universe? I think, again, that as scientists, which are blessed with the quality that we can do collaborations, it's our, what we have to do is devote all our energies and drive in order to turn this vision you described into a reality. It is our duty. Sesame is a project that we would, we would like to leave to the future generations as something positive from our time. A message from a past where it was inconceivable to have a dialogue or maybe even some kind of unity in the Middle East. The future generations will carry Sesame further with their own projects, with their own dreams. These are our questions. This is our vision. This is our dream. We are calling for scientists from all over the region to join us in this extraordinary adventure. Our dream is that an experiment done collaboratively at Sesame would be worthy of a Nobel Prize in science. Thank you.